What's good, the internet? Thank you very much to everybody that has subscribed and everybody that is watching. I know it's hard to find my videos because of the way YouTube manipulates traffic. Everybody pays for views and pays for subscribers. So those people get put to the top of the list and all that kind of stuff. So for people like me that I do honestly, if people want to watch my videos, you watch my videos, you like, you subscribe, you watch me, and I'm very happy, happy and supportful for that. You know, so I do the honest way. I don't pay for views, I don't pay for likes, I don't pay any of that kind of nonsense. That thing, that's fraudulent to me, innit? You know, so for you to find my videos, subscribe to me, and help me and support me, all that kind of stuff is... Okay, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. That was a message. Thank you very much. Um, I'll comment. I got the alert. Anyway, thank you. Oh, another one? Oh, thanks, man. Oh, subscriber. Thank you, man. Yes, thank you. See, I've got, just got a new subscriber just now. Thank you so much, man, for people supporting me. You know, I'm going to get into it. Days of Future Past X, man. So I'm going on and on and on. This is what. This is how it is. And I'm going to go in right now because X-Men is my thing. I'm an X-Man man. Days of Future Past, it did a lot of things. Espionage, didn't really do that very well. The CG was absolutely godlike. The fight scenes were absolutely godlike. The storyline of Days of Future Past was incredibly done. What did you expect? They brought back Brian Singer. He's the man. He is the man on the original cast. And the car, the young cast from um, First Class. And let's not make any mistakes. The, the class of First Class was actually a good cast. I didn't like it, as I said, because of the misrepresentation of the Hellfire Club. Other than that, it was a good film. A young Magneto, young Xavier, brilliant. So I'm not going to say the film was garbage. It's just elements that were powerful and influential to me, I didn't like. I thought the film, in terms of character development, there was none. But you don't need it. Not in a Marvel action film like this. And where we know the characters, we know Xavier, we know Wolverine, we know Storm, we know all those characters. But there's one thing I want to draw your attention to, which is very important. We saw Sunspot. The character, he, basically, he's got invulnerability. He can fly. He's got superhuman strength and he can project heat blasts and kinetic blasts. This character is an Avenger and he is godlike. He was in this film. Warpath. They put Warpath in this film. That character has got superhuman strength. He's like Captain Marvel. The character Warpath can fly. Superhuman strength. Invulnerability. Not limited invulnerability. Invulnerability. And he's a godlike fighter. Warpath is huge. Blink. This chick can fight Holocaust, Apocalypse's son. This chick is, I won't say godlike. She's high, high, high level. Yeah, she can open portals, uh, portals to different realms, and she can. I'm not gonna go into it. I was gonna talk about some of the fights she's had with some godlike mutants, but I'm not gonna go there. Blink is high level. You had Colossus there. Superhuman strength and superhuman durability, and he can turn his um, body into organic metal. Now, he's not invulnerable. He has just got high durability. So, and you have Bishop there as well. He can absorb energy and then send it back into you at energy bars or kinetic blasts. So, you had an uh, incredible cast in the first seven minutes of the film. The first seven minutes of the film was absolutely mind-blowing. Mind explosion. <laughs> My mind just exploded. And we had Bobby. Sorry, Bobby. Iceman. He went in. In at the beginning. Absolutely incredible. The way he was freezing up everything. The one thing that did register in my brain because I don't watch the trailers, I don't really like to watch trailers of these films or anything like that or watch the previous films because it's all in my head, you know what I mean? I'm a 80s and 90s child, but it's all in my brain. The last time I watched a good X-Men film, yeah, 15, 16, so do the maths. I really enjoyed X this, um, this film. I'm waiting for about 16 years, I'm waiting for a good X-Men film and now I finally got one. They could have done a good one in X-Men. Wolf with the last Wolverine film, but I felt like Hugh Jackman was the only god-like character in that whole film, and you need a cast to be good. Good mutants, the storyline was good, 
but it was just a bit watered down and just lost in interpretation. That's why I didn't really like the Wolverine film, the last one. That, I don't know what it was called, I can't even remember. I've erased it from my memory, it was that bad. It's almost like the Iron Man film. And the Iron Man film could have been a godlike film because it dealt with the extremist saga, which is a godlike, basically a reboot on the Iron Man story. So, but they ruined it in that film. I feel like they forgot about the character. They just focused on a, on a Robert Downey Jr. Opposed to Tony Stark. But anyway, we're not going into that. Days of Future Past. Didn't blow me away. But it was good in terms of Wolverine. In terms of Magneto. Xavier. You saw Ink in there. Ink, he's got the, all these type of um, tattoos. And every tattoo has a unique ability. A different power. You had, as I said, Bishop, because of, Havoc was in there, Cyclops' brother was in there, um, Storm was in there, Toad was in there, you know, he's got like that super durable tongue, superhuman tongue, and he could spit mucus that can like mess you up and incapacitate you. You had all these kind of incredible characters, Shadow Cat, sorry, Shadow Cat was there as well in the beginning, you know, she can phase through any object and face consciousness, people's consciousness through time, you know, because they don't have a time machine, because originally it was a time machine. <clears throat> Let me tell you that originally, the storyline, the original storyline was Apocalypse sent Mystique to kill Senator Kelly, which caused humans to create the Sentinel program, which basically wiped out mutants. That happening caused Apocalypse to create another thing called the Virus Plague. The virus plague then destroyed Cable's future. So Cable had to go back into the timeline and stop Bishop from saving the future in Days of Future Past. In order for humans to get infected by the virus plague, then it infected mutants, and then mutants' bodies created the antibodies, which then saved mankind. But because Bishop saved the assass stopped the assassination from happening, it never affected mutants. So when the virus plague actually came back afterwards, in later on in the future, humans had no immu immunity towards it. So all the mutants got wiped out. That was the original story. They can't do that anymore because the Senator Kennedy storyline is done. If you notice in this film, there was no Senator Kelly, because it's done. There was no Master Mode and there was no Apocalypse. Making Mystique the main character was actually fascinating because Mystique is a very influential, powerful character. She really, really is. The way they made her the main I feel the way they made her main character was because of Jennifer Lawrence, because of how big Jennifer Lawrence is. Everybody loves her. She's so funny. She's so cool. She's a good actress, all this type of other stuff. So I feel that's the reason they made her like the main character. Every opportunity they had, they made her look like Jennifer Lawrence. And I feel like you saw more of Jennifer Lawrence Mystique than Mystique Mystique. But it was still good, you know, it didn't take away from it. The, it was a powerful relationship between Charles, Eric and Mystique. It was really good, man. It was a, that was what was very important. That's where the characters clashed a lot. Was especially through Magneto and Xavier and it was very, very powerful. The acting in this film was amazing. There was, as I said, no character development. Hank McCoy, Beast, was really good. The whole film was an unbelievable telling of a very complex and historic and nostalgic storyline to a lot of people that are my age now. You know, because I was raised in the 90s. You know, well, 90s, thousands, you know. So it was part of my history. And for me to walk away saying, I feel satisfied. My brain and my heart feel satisfied. They did not ruin it. They did it justice. The cast, the storyline, it had it had an exceptional pacing. I love the film. I cannot say a bad word about this film. Not one bad thing. I thoroughly enjoyed it. If I think about it, the film was so good, I didn't even notice music was in that film. I don't think that film had a soundtrack. That film was so good. My, I was so zoned in. I wouldn't say it was so good. It was engrossing. The only time I didn't, I kind of like snapped out of it. Some scenes were so set heavy that I got taken out of the film. But other than that, it was a lot of sites that were on location. Like when you saw the sun, it was a real sun. When they got splashed with water, it was the real water. When they're walking 
in the middle of a, a, a park or a, a busy road or a town or, or area. It felt like they were really there, like when they were in the 70s. It felt like they were in the 70s. Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, that dude looked huge, huge Hugh Jackman. You know, his flesh, his skin looked like an old level wallet. His, he just looked, he looked powerful. That, that is the best incarnation of Wolverine. Free! What was funny I did find in this film was in the very ending, in the future, everybody, it's like 50 years in the future, Wolverine looks old, but Jean Grey looks young, Scott still looks young, Xavier still looks like Xavier, but Wolverine's the only one that's aged. Like, look out for that. And in the very ending, you, I don't know who you see. I don't know if it's Apocalypse or Sinister, but in the very, very ending, you see a figure. But I think, because they're all going like, um, so Unruba, Unruba. And I kind of think, because Apocalypse's name was something like Nuruba or Nubi or something like that. And I feel like they were saying it, but I'm not too sure if it was Apocalypse or if it was Sinister. Because Apocalypse is from the Egyptian era. He's Because he's like uh, the first mutant, like Dracula was the first vampire, you know. Uh, but I think it was Apocalypse, because if you look, when the camera changes, you actually see figures in the background. And I think those were the Four Horsemen. That like they were very blurred in the background, but I think you saw the Four Horsemen, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's what I think. Wait, I forgot to say Quicksilver was in it. And Quicksilver was really, really good in that film. He has the ability to run at supersonic speed. Yeah, but he was really cool. They did do a little bit of a reference, like a joke. Quicksilver asked him what is his ability, and he said, I can control metal. Quicksilver says, oh, that's cool. My mum knew a man like that. Uh, Magneto looked like... And then that's when Xavier opened the door. So, Xavier, without his tele telekinetic ability, he can walk. And that is true, because in the Savage Land saga, when Ma um, what made Ma um, Xavier able to walk, was in Savage Lands, because in Savage Lands, mutants can't access their ability. He was able to walk. On the whole, I really enjoyed the story, with, especially with Eric, Charles, Mystique, and Logan. I really, really enjoyed it. I feel Bishop could have been cast better, and could have been in the film more better. It's an exceptional film. I enjoyed the implementation of the Nimrods. That absolutely shocked me. The Sentinels, as in the first generation Sentinels, had no impact on the film whatsoever. Other than Magneto controlling them to dominate a short period of time, like when he lifted the baseball stadium, which was absolutely incredible. I was just, my jaw was on the floor at that moment. It was absolutely fantastic. And he was controlling the Sentinels. It was a wonderful film, very enjoyable, I, I recommend you watch it, I would recommend anybody go watch it. It's the film that should have been done a long time ago, it should have been, don't hold back. They went in on this film and it's exceptional. I hope they do the storyline next with Apocalypse, The Virus Plague and Cable, because they can, they should do that from ne the next, from, from here going. I look forward to that, then, then maybe going into the Onslaught saga, but you know, and being too presumptuous. So I hope they do that. It was wicked to see the mutants versus the Nimrods. Because Nimrods, you can't fuck with the Nimrods. You know, once you hit a Nimrod with an ability, the Nimrods are essentially the ones that wipe out the mutant race. Because once you hit a Nimrod with a certain ability, any mutant ability, they adapt immediately. That ability does not work on them. You hit them with a concussion blast. It will work on them again. You hit them with any type of heat ray, it will work on them. That's why in the beginning, when you saw Warpath, Sunspot, Kitty Pride, Shadowcat, Blink, um, Iceman fighting against the Nimrods, that is a godlike team. They got wiped out. They absolutely got wiped out because the Nimrods are that powerful. It was a very, very good interpretation of Nimrods and an incredible interpretation, movie um, com um, adaptation of the comics. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I give 20th Century Fox a thumbs up for that. Well done. Well done. You didn't screw up. You didn't screw up. I would basically give this film 
I'd give it an eight and a half out of ten. Please go watch it. I know I went on a bit. I'm sorry about that. And even then, I have cut it down essentially from what I wanted to say because I'm an X-Man man. I didn't get to talk about Nate Gray. He was Nate Gray, X-Man, was in the beginning of the film. I didn't go into that kind of stuff. I didn't go into the um, or time and past storyline with Cable, which I wanted to, and Apocalypse and Sinistar, and the Age of Apocalypse, which I wanted to. There's more time for that. So I'll just say thank you for watching. If you liked it, please put comments. I could talk more in depth about this because I am a child of the 90s. This is my life, this is my history, so I can go in as much as you want, if you watch. Thank you very much for watching, thank you to all my subscribers and everybody that just watches and supports and gives me your input to make my show better. Thank you very much. My next video, I'm going to be talking about video games and the way the gaming press interprets video games. And I believe... A video game revolutionary called Saurian Dash is helping change the game of video games and the way video games is sold and educated to the gaming public. That's going to be my next video. So until then, please look out for that. Have a nice day. Take care and I'll see you back here on my next video. One warrior, one nation. Let's go. Take care guys.